In this tutorial, I am going to use the Gram Schmidt process to determine an orthonormal basis for the subspace of R3 spanned by the set of vectors 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 0, 2, 2. So, given those are three vectors, I'll start by naming them. The first one I'll call it V1, the second one I'll call it V2, the third one I'll call it V3. What we are looking for is a set of vectors u1, u2, and u3, where those vectors each have a norm of 1 and are pairwise orthogonal. To find that set of uh, vectors u1, u2, and u3, I'm going to use uh, the Gram Schmidt process. And the first step is uh, to normalize uh, v1. So when you normalize v1, we get a new vector u1. And that u1 is given by v1 divided by the norm of uh, v1. Our v1 we are saying is the 1, 0, 1 there. And for the norm of v1 is the square root of the inner product of v1 and v1. Multiply the corresponding elements, then add them. 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1. Under the square root there, we would have a 2. And that will give us square root of 2. Here we are saying the norm of v1. The norm of v1 is the one that we are saying is a 2. So we have our u1 is equal to the vector 1, 0, 0, divided by square root of 2. And dividing each element of the vector u1 by the square root of 2 there, we'll get 1 divided by square root of 2, 0, 1 divided by square root of 2. So we have uh, that vector there, that's our u1. And the next step now is uh, to obtain u2. But to get u2, we first have to evaluate w2. And w2 is equal to v2 minus the inner product of v2 and u1 multiplied by u1. Our v2 is the 1, 2, 0 there. Our u1 is the one that you obtained, this one. And the u2 is given by w2 divided by the norm of w2. So to get uh, that u2, we first have to evaluate that inner product there, the v2 and uh, u1. So the inner product of v2 and u1 is equals to 1, 2, 0, dot 1, divided by square root of 2, 0, 1, divided by square root of 2. For that inner product, multiply the corresponding elements and we add them, then we have 1 times 1 divided by square root of 2, plus 2 times 0, plus 0, times 1 divided by square root of 2. The result there will be 1 divided by square root of 2. So we substitute that 1 divided by square root of 2 here, where we have that inner product of v2 and u1. Our w will then become v2 minus 1 divided by square root of 2 times u1. We can go on and uh, simplify that because we have that uh, the u1 there is the one which is highlighted on top there. So we have 1, 2, 0 minus a half, 0, a half. The result there is coming from uh, multiplying the u1, which is highlighted on the top right there, by 1 divided by square root of 2. Then when you subtract those two vectors, we would have a half, 2 minus a half. So what you are having there, that's our w2. But you are saying our u2 there is w2 divided by the norm of w2. Since we have already found our w2, we go on and find the norm of w2. The norm of w2 is uh, the square root of the inner product of w2 and w2. Multiply the corresponding elements and add them. We would have a half times a half plus 2 times 2 plus minus a half times minus a half. And that will give us the square root of 18 divided by 4, which you can simplify to 3 root 2 divided by 2. So we go on and uh, substitute uh, that uh, norm of w2 into the formula which is highlighted above for the u2. And we'll get u2 there is equal to 2 w2 divided by 3 root 2. So what we are having there, our u2 is 2 w2 divided by 3 times square root of 2. Our w2, we have it here, this one. So if we substitute where we have uh, the w2, I put that factor that I've highlighted. Our u2 will simplify to 1 divided by 3 times square root of 2. 
4 divided by 3 times square root of 2 minus 1 divided by 3 times square root of 2. So that's our vector u2 there. And the next step now is to obtain u3. But to get u3, we first have to evaluate w3, which is equal to v3 minus the inner product of v3 and u1 times u1 minus the inner product of v3 and u2 times u2. I'll then go on and evaluate the inner product of v3 and u1, which is equal to 0, 2, 2, dot 1 divided by root 2, 0, 1 divided by root 2. I'm using the values of uh, the v3 and the u1 we have above there. Multiply the corresponding elements, then add them. We have 0 times 1 divided by square root of 2, plus 2 times 0, plus 2 times 1 divided by square root of 2. And that will simplify to 2 divided by square root of 2. Substitute that 2 divided by square root of 2 into the inner product here that I've highlighted there. Then we'll have v3 minus 2 divided by square root of 2 times u1. I now go on and evaluate the inner product of v3 and u2. So we have v3 and u2. That's the inner product there. Multiply the corresponding elements, then add them. It gives 0 times 1 divided by 3 times square root of 2 plus 2 times 4 divided by 3 times square root of 2 plus 2 times minus 1 divided by 3 times square root of 2. And uh, that will simplify to 6 divided by 3 square root of 2. So substitute where we have this inner product here. We are now putting 6 divided by 3 times square root of 2. And we have minus 6 divided by 3 times square root of 2 times the u2. But we have our u2 there. It's this vector here. And uh, we also have our u1. It's this vector here. And uh, we have our v3. This vector here. So we go on and substitute uh, those vectors here. And uh, the result that we get there is uh, 0, 2, 2, minus 2 divided by square root of 2 times the vector u1, minus 6 divided by 3 divided by square root of 2 times the vector u2. So that's our w3 there. Now looking at uh, this part here, for those vectors, we can look at the part where we are multiplying 2 divided by square root of 2 multiplied by the vector u1. Multiply throughout by 2 divided by square root of 2. And then uh, multiply the other part there where we have 6 divided by 3 times square root of 2. Put it inside that vector there. And then uh, our vectors will simplify to 0, 2, 2, minus 1, 0, 1, minus the vector 1 over 3, 4 over 3 minus 1 over 3. And then when we go on and subtract the corresponding elements there, 0 minus 1 minus 1 over 3, it will give us minus uh, 4 over 3. And uh, the other parts will give us 2 over 3, then the other one 4 over 3. So we have our vector there, the w3 is minus 4 over 3, 2 over 3, 4 over 3. So that's uh, the w3 there. We then go on and use the W3 to obtain U3. U3 is equals to W3 divided by the norm of W3. For the norm of W3 is the square root of the inner product of W3 and W3. And uh, we multiply the corresponding elements, then add them. Minus 4 over 3 times minus 4 over 3 plus 2 over 3 times 2 over 3 plus 4 over 3 times 4 over 3 and it will give us the square root of 36 over 9. 36 over 9, that's a 4. Then uh, the square root of 4 is a 2. So we have the norm of W3 is a 2. We substitute that 2 here where we have uh, the norm of W3. So we have our U3 will be equals to the vector U3 divided by 2. When we divide that vector by 2 there, it will be the 4 divided by 2, it gives us a 2. The 2 divided by 2, it's a 1. The 4 divided by 2, it gives us a 2. So our u3 there will be minus 2 over 3, or 1 over 3, 2 over 3. So what we are having there, we have uh, those are uh, three vectors, u1, u2, and u3. 
of the set of the vectors u1, u2, and u3, they form the orthonormal basis that we were looking for.